Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Equiculture Speaks. I'm Heidi Feather. I am your host. My co-host and partner, Pam Reckenbach, will be joining us shortly. So what is Equiculture? Equiculture mission is to restore the connection between horses, humans, and Mother Earth. Horses help restore our ancestral connection with the land, culture, integrating traditional horse people, ecology, restoring our soils back to living and thriving organisms, interdependence, each ecosystem supports another ecosystem, connection, bringing people together with differences for the good of all. Gosh. Greetings. We are going to tell you we are dedicating this podcast to Harvey Arden. And why you might ask, well, we're going to explain that all to you. Harvey was a National Geographic staff writer for 23 years. Ah, he passed away a few years ago and he was honored at the headquarters of Ge National Geographic in Washington, D.C. in the Explorer Room. He, has, he was also uh, an author and he wrote many books and they were Wisdom Keepers, Meeting with Native American Elders, Dream Keepers, A Spiritual Journey into Aboriginal Australia, Noble Red Man, Lakota Wisdom Keeper, Travels in a Stone Canoe, The Return to the Wisdom Keepers, Prison Writings, My Life is My Sundance by Lennon Pelletier. Have you thought of Lennon Pelletier lately? It's another book. White Buffalo Teachings by Avo Looking Horse, or with Avo. Voice of the Hawk Elder by Anna Gordon. Again, Noble Red Man, audio CD, readings and music. My Life is My Sundance, audio CD and reading and music. And also, Broomstick Revolution by Edna Gordon. So Pam, tell us why Javi, we are, why we are dedicating this podcast to Javi Aden. Okay. Um it's a big story and I'm not going to tell it right now because uh, as we know it will go on for a while but it started in the Amazon and then later I would come to meet uh, Harvey in person and he asked me to be a partner with him in creating an online community called Dream Keepers um, and so I had the opportunity to be with Harvey for about 10 years I learned a lot from him. I learned about the real important messages that our native elders all over the world and specifically North and South America were sharing with the world at the time. And um, I understood the, the, the critical point we're at very, very strongly through helping Harvey by meeting these elders. Um, Harvey did pass and it, it's, hard, it's hard for me to understand that he's really not here because I feel him. Um, Harvey was like a father figure. He was a mentor. He was an inspiration to me. His devotion to our native elders, his uh, absolute um, selflessness in what he gave. So I had a really good role model for how to make a difference <clears throat> and how to speak truthfully for the ones that I'm trying to honor. And in this case, it's the horses. Um, Harvey was meticulous in how he presented the elders and in that way he was able to bridge the difficulties we have in understanding each other really perfectly. He framed their words in such a beautiful way that Fool's Crow originally recognized his gift and asked him to leave his job basically at, at uh, National Geographic and write, record these elders for the future and for the future generations and also for our very present time and the struggles that we're finding ourselves in. So uh, I could say so much about Harvey. I just really want to express at this moment the love and uh, the opportunity, this right now, this opportunity to dedicate anything I do to him 
means everything. And when I thought we agreed to do this together, I said to you, because we met through Harvey years and years ago, and uh, I wanted to dedicate this to Harvey, and I'm sure Harvey is so proud. Thank you so much for that. So in 2009, Pam started, um, at the time it was called Blue Star Aquaculture, and now it's just called Aquaculture. And Pam's gonna tell us the reason that she felt it was very important that working horses had a place to go when they were done their main jobs. Pam? Yeah. So in 2009, it came, this idea came about because of a horse named Bud, who we'll share more in detail about later. Um, it was together an idea that a couple of us had. And um, I want to give the credit to the word aquaculture to Christina Hansen, who was one of my partners at the time. And I also want to get, give credit to Linda, my boss in Philadelphia, who inspired me to be a better leader at all times. So when I jumped in at, in 2009, I really didn't understand the situation the horses were in. I was criticized and also attacked a lot by animal rights people unjustly. Like I had a beautiful horse and they were constantly saying he was a slave. And this kind of thing is really painful. And um, it's- Because of, I'm just gonna interject here. You worked at 76 Carriage Company. I was a carriage driver. A driver. Yeah. And okay, this. And, I, and it's important to know also that I was giving tours in the national park where all of our founding fathers were. And when you learn their stories, you begin to understand the horse was pivotal in all of it, by the way. You know, they didn't have the big working horses yet, but the horses were helping deliver messages all day long. They were helping in a countless ways. But I really got a sense of how that city was built with the horses. And um so for when, you know, we'd be attacked on the streets for doing this with the horses, I'd be like, but they built the city, you know? And so anyway, I understood at that time and, and also having friends in New York that this is a problem. American culture has completely forgotten who these horses are, at least the general overall population. Unless you own the horses, you don't really understand who and how special they are. They're not the same as riding horses or eventing horses or all those. They're different and they're different because most of us had them in our backyards a hundred years ago. They were the ones who were helping us keep, go, keep our farms going, keep our businesses going. They were very much the working class horse. And it just so happened that they were getting in the way of progress in the eyes of progressives or others that were looking at Henry Ford who wanted to put his motor vehicles on. on. And so as they became more and more unpopular in the sense culturally, it began, there was a whole campaign to get rid of them in the very same way that there was a campaign to end small farming. Um, in the very same way, there was a, a real drive to end, you know, personally owned like little businesses and join big corporate, corporate kinds of business, you know, you have more security. Right, so, and so you saw this need for the horses to have a place exactly. to go when they were done working. Yeah. And, and so- And how you, relevant they were. Right. And you so know. you partnered with some of your friends from the carriage company yep, we and to get land in Palmer, Massachusetts. And then we began and I called it Blue Star Prop, uh, Blue Star Prop, Blue Star Aquaculture, because it was regarding the Blue Star Prophecy, which um, were beginning cosmically around the time of 2008. And any tribe in North and South America will tell you, especially the Central American tribes that Blue Star, the Blue Star alignment, in, in their opinion, was the beginning of the children of the earth waking up and needing the guidance of the wisdom of the elders. And so um, I wanted to, and that this new time was coming. So I wanted to be a part of that. So it was Blue Star Aquaculture in that this, is, this means that we are part of this new thinking of community and these new ideas of bringing together understanding and, and um, and love, you know, like and compassion to things we might not understand. So we're in a new time. We've been in a new time for a while, and I wanted aquaculture to reflect that. Um, it wasn't didn't go at all like I planned in that way, but um, I did get my message out, and as a result, hundreds of horses have been helped. Hundreds, maybe thousands of people's minds have been changed about the working horses because what we offered that was different was this opportunity to come and know them personally. 
And honestly, I didn't get in the way of that in any way. I felt that was a very sacred thing. I would give people tools, basic, and I was learning a lot in the early years too, but I was giving them whatever basic tools they would need to communicate with the horses, but basically leaving them alone with their relationship with the horse. So now I want to jump ahead to where yeah. are you at now? And we'll go into more detail at another time yep. about a lot of this background, because this is just an intro and we really want to give you a taste, a little bit of everything. So where are you located now? We're and what's so special? Yeah, She's located now in Maine in Canaan, Maine. And what is so special now about this farm that you have? We own it, number one. <laughs> and I have to say that changes the whole game for us. So all of the things we were trying to implement in terms of the community or design or permaculture or ecology or all these things that mattered a lot to us that we weren't able to see fulfilled on the other farms, we can do that now here. And, um, you know, gonna it's gonna be an exam i know it's a in, i know that what i have created and once it's manifested in this system here it is a model that can be used it's part of the forward way we can go with our horses that are homeless and disabled or um or um retired like we as a community owe these workhorses everything you know and anybody will say that to you once they know them oh yeah they did everything yeah we owe them better than throwing them away and honestly there, are, there is no such thing as a thrown away you could, something that's proper could be life that could be properly thrown away and if you look at how we treat the animals the horses in particular in this case that we have such a close connection with this, this whole getting rid of them thing or is actually not the problem of the working horse the, the people that have them in stables that had long careers with them they don't want their horses to be shipped they find proper homes for them through friends or others but I thought wouldn't it be good for some of them that have the disabled horses to have a place they could count on to and it's worked you know hundreds of people have contacted me I became the official retirement for the New York City horses I became a real huge part of the retirement of the Philadelphia horses and in some other businesses you know and the reason they can't keep their horses is because they have urban stables they can't be retired there those that's around the clock kind of thing and they need places where they can have homes you know and loving homes and so my goal was to make sure we honored and respected them in a proper more proper way because i felt that everybody really did want that they just didn't know how to get there exactly so now what's the name of your farm yeah the name of the farm is anam tara and um you know having lived so long among native peoples i got real in touch with my own identity as a Viking. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't necessarily see myself as anything other than that. I never have really, I see, I have a lot of those traits. So I'm, it's a Gaelic and it means Gaelic word and it means soul friend, soul friend in the highest form. And a soul friend is an eternal friend on in this world and the next and the next that sees and knows you and loves you. And you are always safe with them, no matter what they, have no judgment against you. They always are with you. Um, so I knew the horses are exactly that type of friend. And now there's another component to agriculture that we want to touch on, and that's soil regeneration, which is highly important in this day and age. It's the most Be important. The most important because the industrialized farming has really degraded soils, toxified them. So and made it you, sick. they made it sick. So made what, sick. <laughs> what can you offer yeah. to help remedy that situation? Yeah, I'm really lucky to have met so many extraordinary people. And one of them is Glenn Batten. And he's a close friend of mine now. Um, he's the caretaker keeper of a particular formula that was created by an older gentleman who's now passed who it was his life's work to create a formula that would restore the pristine fertility in the soil. That's how he ex explained it. Um, this formula has been around for a long time. It's been used for big industry things. It actually was used to clean off barges. It's been used in hazmat tests. Um, golf courses use it that want to go organic lawns. And anybody that tries this stuff um, wants it, more of it. It's like the miracle, I can't really say this, but it is very much like the products that we, the chemical products that produce real fast results. It's fast acting, 
what it does is stimulate and activate the life in the soil. So it begins to help your soil um, heal. And by, by take, helping return, helping restore the fertility by inviting back the microorganisms and all that. It's like a deluxe meal for your soil. And it also drives the rooting really deep, um, protects the soil, it protects the immunity of the plant right out of the gate. So you're, you know, while it's working on restoring your soil, it's feeding your plant every single thing it could possibly need. And your plants become, they say in a lot of the um, growing industries, they get 30% more production with using feedback. So it's not out there. I have the, the permission to sell it. I'm working with my friend, Glenn, who's a really special individual. Um, he's not interested in being a billionaire. He's guarded these formulas really carefully. And um, he wants, he knows me well, and he knows that I am dedicated to the earth in this way. And he also knows that um, every garden I've ever built, I only ever have used it. And, um, and they've been beautiful gardens. Everybody that's seen them knows. It's not necessarily the best gardens because I've never get a chance to have a, the best garden, but I can grow. I always tell people, bring me your sick and dying plants. Let's put them in and you'll see. And you know, it's real. I'm just always constantly amazed by what this formula can do. And when I'm spraying it, now we've developed a tank for the horses to be able to pull. When we're spraying it, you can feel the earth. I mean, if you're close to your land in any way, you feel it tanking. I mean, it's a, a feeling, a connection you get to have with your land when you're working with it. Um, it can re, it can restore and reverse diseases. And because once your plants in, are healthy and your soil is healthy, they don't want to come. You know, these uh, these opportunistic pests and, and bugs, they come because it, there's a signal being sent out, recycle me, I'm sick. You know, it's very much like in our own bodies. And uh, when it's healthy, those bugs aren't interested. They even can't digest a healthy plant particle of any kind. I mean, they can't eat a plant like that. And they're not even inclined to want to. The mothers aren't gonna raise their babies there. I mean, it's amazing. It has an impact in all of the animals, from insects to everything that would hurt your garden. It kind of encourages them to leave and invites the beneficials. Immediately, the beneficials recognize it. And that's the butterflies, the, the snakes, toads, wasps, um, you know, bumblebees, worms, all of them. Within a year, you have a living system. So, um, you know, this formula is important. And it's been given to me to use for the horses because <clears throat> the horses also play a really big, important part in keeping the soil healthy, even if all they did was stand around and make manure, they're helping us because we need that manure. We need that compost. And we've also designed this system of keeping them, which we'll put in place here in the next couple of years, pathways where they walk. So we collect the manure. You know, they'll be able to be out on pastures that are open to them, that are that are rotated. But we also are going to collect the manure because we'll need it for the rest of our gardens. And um, with feedback, you know, people will get the opportunity to see the power of this formula. It's important to us, um, not, well, right now it's a, it's a world crisis. People don't talk about it because there's a lot of media blackout around it too. You know, chemical companies and um, ag companies don't want you knowing what's really going on, but we have so much degraded dead soil around the world now because of the use of these products. And this immediately helps turn it around. And there are programs now that are out there trying to help restore these farmlands and these guys, what were they, you know, what the general average they're making today is like $40 an acre, what their grandparents were making practically. They're not making more money. The promise of progress didn't work that way for them. <clears throat> now with organic and healing their soil and the demand in the community, they're making up to $500 an acre. It's a much better lifestyle for the children. You know, children in the farmlands, they don't go out and play in the day when they're spraying. They can't. And these farmers are eating at gas stations. They're not eating homegrown food. They're growing one crop and they're spraying it and they have to wear hazmat suits. You know, it used to be when you plowed up your field, all the birds from everywhere came to eat the worms. There's no birds that come. There's no animals that come. We have really broken an important- There's thing. no worms. They can't live in the no, soil. Nothing can live in, the, in those chemicals. It's, and it's a horrific so it's, kind of wipeout. So that that's a product that you will be sell you are selling right away within the next couple of weeks we'll get it out there um it is just a couple of us and we're again um unless i were able to find 
the um, capital that would help me do the bigger things, I, I really have to do it in a grassroots way. And I know I can. The horses have so many supporters. And what better for them to do this either for a friend or for their own land or their own plants in their house? I mean, when you see what it does to any plant, it's like you want it. I had a, somebody call me a friend, a supporter of the horses, and she said, you know, I've been bringing it to the nursing home, and the ladies there are saying, what is it that you gave these plants, because they never look like this, and she goes, can we get some more, and I'm like, absolutely, and, uh, you know, once it's used, it's, it's one of those things, like I always say, if you want to know these horses, come and meet them, I can talk about them all day, I can take the best pictures, but there's a very different thing when you experience it, and it's the same with the formula in, in, um, yeah, when you see what they do to your plants, you won't believe it. You all of a sudden. Feel so like that's so. This is one of the things that we can look forward to, is more about this amazing feedback product. So what can what do you think will be happening at the farm that if anybody's in the New England area? Well, that, I have big plans because honestly, we have to have them now. We have to jumpstart this back into something. And um, so we can support our horses, you know, uh, and be there for the horses that will meet us. So what I have planned in the May, I, this is a this is a plan I've had for years, but I've never been able to pull it off. But now, finally, on our own land, we can. In May, the first weekend in May, when they're holding the Kentucky Derby, I want to hold the Draft Horse Derby, and that awesome. means that'll be exciting. Maybe nobody will come, but my friends. But I know that will grow. Who doesn't want to see these clients or all these? balls racing each other i mean they're not the best racers but they're fun and we can have fun and have the fancy hat contest and so that's one event the next event are then the other events that i've planned are our reenactment work thing that presentation that we did last we did in middle field a year and a half ago unbelievably successful we had several characters from the past who changed the world with their horses and um, it was exciting and moving. There were people crying because nobody really knows the whole story of Joan of Arc and her horse and um, what it cost her, you know, and or King Henry and his shires and how all of the known Europe was conquered with these big guys. And he had laws, you know, that made, made them so. You know, basically our draft horses are all former war horses. Uh, that's in them. And these shires have it more than that. They can slam the ground like nobody's business. And um, so we did Henry VIII, we did Queen Elizabeth, who was his daughter, who would use her horse, Shire horses, as the first symbol for feminine power. That, That's amazing, I feminine mean, and power. And so it's so a reenact. Uh, yeah. She rode her horse into battles, like they didn't want her to, but she rode her horse, she had a big gray, and uh, you know, we have Foxy who, who you know, he used to Shire, he comes straight for, so Queen, of, Queen, of, Queen Elizabeth rode Foxy, Joan of Arc, we had, we had Washington with his horse, Nelson, who he loved, a bay, who Sarge, our blind horse, Sarge played that part along with Thunder, who is a carriage horse who loved, you would think that horse rode his whole life, he'd never ridden, and he ended up becoming the best characterization of Blue, the horse that Washington did ride. Right. So, so that's, so that's, that sounds exciting. I mean, uh, the Thunder on the ground, I would call it, for our draft horse race. Yes. And, you know, the reenactments, that Which sounds come in the really. Fall. Yep, because that's a good temperature and time for that. And... Yeah. So there'll, there'll be a lot of exciting stuff. And we plan to interview people. Oh, that's the other. Part. Yes. Like we have talked about earth keepers, wisdom keepers, uh, people in the equine world, any equine, any part of the equine world, we want to know about it. We want to, we want to know what the love of the horse drives you to yeah. do what you do with your horse. Yeah. So is that, and we're looking for, these, we have all these friends, beautiful yeah. friends who are also struggling to do real important work. And uh, I think helping in any way to hear their voice. I mean, Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, the elders, they they know this time is so crucial to get the message out there. So we'll be speaking with elders. You know, we, we've got plans. Yeah, we have and, a really important one, a, a horse medicine person yep. who's um, happy and willing to help in that way. Sorry with my cat. But, um, <laughs> is that what that was? <laughs> um, 
yeah, I mean, and then I was also taught by some of the best organic horticulturists in the world. I mean, the best. And so we can talk about biodynamics with experts. We can ask questions with experts. We can get Glenn on who will talk all day and uh, have him explain what he's seen this formula do and, uh, and what it's made of and all of that. And um, yeah, it's exciting for me because I have all these friends and some of them are really de dear old friends. And I've always said, well, one day I want to do something with you and here it is. And this is why I know Harvey would be so proud because you know he always wanted to have an opportunity to bring so many of these minds together and um, to just share, share, you know, from the goodness of their hearts, what they know and their wisdom. There's an incredible lack of wisdom in our around our leaders in the world right now. Um, they have no elders with them explaining to them, you know, what matters and what doesn't matter when you're running things and. You know, we need these elders' voices and um, not just the elders, but the elders in all of our communities. You know, we have amazing farmers that I've met through DAPNET and the logging community that, oh my God, they're right there with the native people in wisdom. Yeah, so we have a lot we're planning to share with you and we can't wait to get it started. So thank you so much for joining us. And We'll be back soon with more and more explanation, more people to interview. And we we'll hope you'll join us on this incredible aquaculture journey.